What's up, guys? Back with another stream. Still working on the Poor Swigger Rub Academy. Uh, we finished. No, we didn't finish. We're still working on the authentication module. Um, we got to a spot that's sort of um, challenging. I mean, the whole thing has been challenging, but this part specifically. And I was getting tired last time, so who knows? Maybe all cylinders weren't firing um, properly. We're going to get rid of that. I was showing off the mystery challenge last time. Uh, but we are in this module. I think we're even doing this lab here. Enumeration via account lock. So if I remember right, last time we were doing this and couldn't get the account to lock. Um, so we were throwing a word list of... Oh, we still got burp. Let's take a look. Ooh, dark mode. Dark mode. Um, I'm actually gonna take a second and just spam myself out quick let people know that we're streaming in case anybody wants to come watch oops throw that on LinkedIn I'll throw it on I should probably add some tags to that um, not now sorry guys next time I'm gonna do this before I start recording it's uh, it's a pain in the butt for me too because I have to go back and um, I have to go back and chop this out before I post it to YouTube Oh no. You ever hit the insert button on accident and everything starts acting all wonky? Happens to me all the time. Um. <laughs> I'm also going to share this on Facebook, share it with my friends in real life, and see if any of them want to come watch. That's the move. Alright, uh, so we had previously been working on this. We set two positions. Our payloads, if I remember right, we were doing the full username list, and then we just selected 10 of the passwords. Um, this was not triggering lockouts, though. Um, at least I don't think it was. I wonder... Oh, it's cycling usernames first. 
Well, that's garbage. That's not what I wanted to happen. Um, hello, friends. Mike Firo, nice to see you here, buddy. Uh, Tiberius is here again. Hey, Tiberius, what are we doing tonight? Working on Port Swicker Web Academy. So we're working on the authentication module, and I'm on the account lock challenge. It's been pretty difficult so far. Um, I haven't been able to lock an account out, and I think I just figured out why. So Burp likes to cycle through payload two first, and I'm wondering if I can force it to cycle through payload one first, because it mentions that there is a, uh, it uses account locking, but it contains a logic flaw. I think, or I'm suspecting the logic flaw is that it's, uh, it's locking out a user unless a different user is tried, I guess. I don't know, maybe not. But I threw 10 passwords at it last time we streamed, uh, 10 passwords per user. And it was cycling users first instead of cycling passwords. So I think it's just constantly being reset every, every payload. Because we want it to go through Carlos with every password first. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Burp select payload to rotate first, maybe. Let's read the docs. I have a cat sleeping next to me. Meowth. So I'm trying not to make much noise. Oh, sorry for meowing. I hope I didn't wake your cat up. Ah, this looks way past my skill level, but I can't wait to get there. It's uh, it's fun, man. Keep at it. It's definitely fun. Um, I mean, this isn't... I don't know. I guess I've been doing this for a while, so maybe I'm taking for granted my previous experiences. But it's, it's not that complex, right? We're just capturing the web requests before they go to the server. So normally, your browser will send a request directly to the web server, and then the web server does some processing and sends a response. So we're catching, we're putting a proxy in the middle, we're catching and modifying, um, and you know, you can add some powerful processing to that, or I guess pre-processing before sending the request. And it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting way to do pen testing. I remember back when it was, uh, there was a program called like Tamper Data or something like that. I'm, I think that was before the I'm still learning the ABCs <laughs> all right well you could just hang out still if you want man I mean we had a pretty good talk last time a lot of fun people in chat so hopefully we'll have a similar night if not um yeah, if we don't have a good chat, that's fine too. I'll, I'll get some good studying done. But either way, it's fun, right? Look at the positives. So we're going to try to figure out how we can configure this properly. Positions. This is used to configure details of the target server for attack requests with payload positions. Attack types determines the way in which payloads are assigned to the payload positions. Payloads. So I already know what this stuff is, right? Positions are... Let's... Look at a real example. So here is a raw web request. The top half up here or the top section are request headers. These are uh, essentially their metadata that um, is sent from the client or your browser to the server. And it's not actually, I guess sometimes it is about the actual data, but it's just kind of some general information like a cookie, the types of uh, responses that you're expecting, the language you're using, and some other things. Uh, this content length assumingly changes based on what the payload is. So that brings me to this bottom portion, which is the payload. Typically you'll see like form data here on a post request. So on a website, there's a login form for in this example. And there is a username text box, a password text box, and a login button. When we click the login button, it triggers this request to be sent and the values that we put in the username field is gonna put be put here. Same with the password, it's put in here. So we capture that request with burp and then we set positions. So we're saying, hey burp, I wanna use this space to just like cycle through a word list, for example. 
and there are some other cool payloads you can use as well but typically we end up using a word list at least that's how um, that's how I've been using it so that covers positions that covers payloads we're inserting payloads into positions resource pool this is uh, the different resources that you're assigning to the intruder and then there's some other options you can configure I like to use the grep um, Oh, what is it grep match so you can search for a string in the response uh, usually this is useful for looking for invalid username and password that lets you know the request did not work and that so here's an example I did a grep match for invalid username or password now on the response if we look this is HTML that's how this works we send a request we get HTML back and then your browser renders it so if we look through this request um, or this response, excuse me, we can see the text that's displayed on page because it's encapsulated in the paragraph brackets, but we are telling Burp to flag any request. These are each request, by the way. Um, flag any request with this little one here, that's the flag, when you find invalid username or password in the response. So we see that one here as well so it's just kind of a nice way we don't have to actually look through each response we can just see hey this one didn't work this one didn't work and then we're able to filter on that and we're looking for one that doesn't have that in the response and it looks like there's actually quite a few that don't have that in the response so maybe we did do some lockouts actually um, now how are we going to figure out how many it took to lock it out Hmm. I wonder if actually I just stopped it and so it didn't get through those maybe or yeah here's a lockout here's a lockout oh no this is gateway timeout so the challenge actually crashed and then it kept doing the attack so it wasn't getting responses because the the challenge was done I, I must have closed out of it or whatever so let's keep reading this. Let's figure out if there's any way we can select to try all passwords with a single username first. Um, so first we're sending it to intruder. We've already done that. We're setting up payload positions. We might need this because that might tell us. Um, I've always wondered excuse me I've always wondered if the payload positions are chronological meaning if I set username first when I go to set payload one it does it just always cycle through payload one first because if that's the case I could set password as payload one and then username is payload two and it would do what I'm trying to get it to do in Burt Pro you can add from list using the fuzzing quick uh, Burp Intruder has a number of functions to help you manage attack and figs. These are available via Intruder menu. So you can save a configuration with payload positions and everything. That's pretty neat. I didn't know that. You can copy configurations between two existing tabs or into a new tab. Again, you can optionally include or exclude payload position settings. You can control how Intruder handles attack configs when you open a new attack lab blah 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 I think really what we're gonna be looking for here is the positions yeah definitely we'll get rid of that and take a look at positions configure target request example for the target payload markers and attack type target field the target let's get this pulled up next to burp maybe and we will go into, oh, that's not even the right one. So we're in Intruder. Uh, let's take a look at this page. It's taking me a minute to get used to dark mode, y'all. So this is our payload positions. Um, target field, I don't see target field. The target field controls the protocol IP address. Oh, right here. Here's our target. So this is where we want to send our requests and also which protocol to use. In this case, HTTPS. 
Ah, and then we have a setting here. So if we wanted to set a custom host request, sometimes you have to do that. Uh, we can unselect that option. The checkbox, update the host header, yada yada, request template, setting up target field, payload markers. This is what we want. Payload markers are placed using this character. It's like a double S stacked on top or like an SOS or I guess, I don't know how what it's called. Probably some kind of like Greek mathematic character or something like that and function as follows. Each pair of markers designates a single payload position. A pair of markers may optionally enclose some text from the template request between them. When a payload position is assigned a payload, both the markers and any enclosed text are replaced with the payload. When the payload position does not have an assigned payload, the markers are removed, but the enclosed text remains unchanged. So, Essentially, if you set a position and don't load a payload, it's going to run as uh, as if you didn't even set that position. To make the configuration easier, Intruder automatically highlights each pair of payloads, markers, and any enclosed text. I love this feature, by the way. This is amazing. That's one of my... like When I first did Burp, it automatically sets payloads it looks for things uh sets positions excuse me it automatically looks for spots that it thinks you may want to fuzz and that's pretty nice uh, we have the ability to clear and manually add we can also auto this is what happens when we enter into it uh refresh you can also use intruder payload positions ui to configure custom insertion points for scans by burp scanner to do this all right, well, I guess we're gonna have to figure it out through testing because it's not in the documentation. So let's, uh, we've already done this way where we assign payload one, payload two. Now let's clear these positions. I'm sorry, I keep saying payload instead of position. So this time I'm gonna select password first and then I'll select username second and let's see if we can get it to do what we wanna do. Kind of just a little experiment here. Um, so we will also have to switch up the payloads. Let's go ahead and clear this out. We'll load the second payload. Should be usernames now if it's working. If this doesn't work, that means we're going to have to modify the request to put password in front of username. And then the server might get pissed and not reply. Passwords short. We'll use the short list. And we'll go ahead and launch that attack. Uh, first, we should probably get our room up and running. And then do all of that again because I'm using a request from the last stream. So it's probably going to change the URL. It's like a neat version of Try Hack Me. Yes, indeed it is. And this one is free. So it's pretty nifty. Um, and ultimately very very recognized in the industry i guess maybe the academy itself i'm not sure how popular that is in the industry but the tool that port swigger built burp is very very common in pen testing and uh, web app security in general so at the end of all of this there's the option to i think it's like 400 500 there's an option to get certified so you don't pay for the course but you can pay for the cert if you want so I might do that if we get through all this. That'd be a good thing to have on the res, I think. And we got that launched. Uh, our URL seems to have changed, possibly. We're also going to have to get a new cookie, I imagine. Goodness gracious, it would have just been easier to start from there instead of coming back and having to do it again. So I'm going to get rid of burp, clear out the session data from last session, and we'll start up a new one. Hopefully it doesn't open in light mode, it might burn my retinas. Cool. Oh no, it's out of date. Oh, that reminds me, I was going to... Um... Ah, I shouldn't do that on stream while people are watching. Excellent. Congrats again. Proud of you, brother. Inspiration to all of us.
Um, sorry, Mike. I was uh, I'm trying to flip back and forth between Discord. Let's see. Oh, I was gonna install Parrot. That's what I was trying to say this whole time. I was gonna run Parrot for a little while, but I haven't done that yet, so I'm not gonna do it in the middle of the stream. And oh goodness, swipe left, please. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been on a dating site. But you're female, I suggest you don't waste your time. And trust me, if you think by paying for a subscription, you'll get a better selection of potential. That's crazy. Yeah, what did they do here? This is like an artist rendition, maybe? Or it was like a photo that was heavily modified? That'd be really cool. I wonder... I'd like to see what I'd look like through this. That'd be interesting. Alright, back to it. We're going to turn on intruder oh excuse me we're gonna turn on the intercept feature so Mike I don't know if you're like actually wanting to learn this stuff or not but I'm gonna do a little bit of backtracking and explain this so that you can uh, character art yeah I think I I'm not sure if you can see it it would be oh yeah it's right out of it's like right here when I was like 10 we went to Disney World and I had a character done just like a, a sketch but Wow, that, the little high-pitched part in the music, that one. I thought that was my daughter screaming. Uh, anywho, there's a little character of me from when I was 10, and I love stuff like that. So we turn on proxy, which this is telling our browser, hey, send this to a local port or a local socket that I have set up. So burp has a local socket, which is listening for traffic. This intercept here stops the request and allows you to modify it. So I could turn this off and the traffic is proxied through burp. So then we get like a history of it all. If I turn this on, when a request is sent, it stops. It doesn't send the request. It, it allows me to modify it and take a look at it. So we're gonna go, sorry, my headphones fall out and pause the music. We're gonna turn that off for a second until we get to where we wanna go. So this is just a little security warning. It notices, the browser notices that something's wonky and that's because we're using burp as a proxy and the certificate does not match the, uh, um, I don't, I, there's a, a more detailed explanation there but I'm gonna butcher it so I'm not even gonna try. I'm trying to see what I want to learn so I'm fine with it. Sweet, all right. So here's like a login form. If we take a look at the HTML here. Um, let's look at this field specifically. It's part of a form, an HTML form, and we can see that it can be expanded and collapsed by clicking there. So this form has a method called post. The action is login. So this will be kind of cool to know, right? The, this is an HTTP method or a web request method, also known as an HTTP verb, and then action. This is the page that the um, request is going to be sent to. So we're currently on that, uh, on that page, slash login. And then we have a label here for username. We have an input field for username. The name of it is username, label for password. And then we have the type of password, name is password. And this is one of the first things I learned when I was a kid, right? So you can, uh, if you have a browser with autofill, you can change this from type, whoops, wrong one, type password to type username, and then you can show the password, right? So this is kind of where, I have no idea what I was looking at, but felt like a hacker. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah, same with me. This is one of the first things I learned how to do is like deface a web page, or at least deface the, the local copy. Um, and display passwords like this. It's pretty helpful if you have like saved credentials and you want to show them. And this is actually um, sometimes web apps, it's not very common, but sometimes web apps will actually display the password um, if you do this, right? So if, if you're looking at your profile, for example, where you can reset your password, it'll show your password and it's usually just like four little characters. So I found a few times uh, where if you unhide the character or you change it to type username, it'll actually display the stored password. So on the back end in the database, 
Um, that password is stored, obviously, in clear text, and the front end is requesting the profile details. You're able to reveal it, so I think the best practice there or a remediation for that is to, even though the password is stored, in that response from the server when you're loading the profile, you're supposed to just have like the password is supposed to come back just as three characters. Um, you shouldn't like make the same number of characters as the password either because that's information disclosure. You're telling uh, a potential attacker how long the password is. So I'm just going to actually turn off intercept. Oops, it was already off. I'm gonna refresh this. We'll get my edits all cleared out. So that's what a, a form is, right? So this here is a form and it when we click the button it's going to do some action so we do test test and then when we we'll turn on this to stop the traffic when we click login it's going to do a post request to login and so we can see that here that's that's what this looks like this is a web packet or an http packet so the method is post the destination is slash login and then here's some metadata that is just included in the request and now here is that form data that we submitted. So we can see test and test what I put in there. And that's kind of how that works. So I'm not sure if you already knew that or not, but um, it's it's definitely something that's it's fun to work with. If you enjoy learning how things work and playing around with them, this is, uh, this is a good path. So all the post is essentially what's going on and behind the scenes. That's right. And there are other types of methods are get, post, put, delete, options trace there's a few other ones and if you're on try hack me there's actually a very good um there's a very good room i think it's even a free room but it's called um i think it's called the basics of web or how the web works and it walks through all this it walks through the diff how the http protocol um essentially works and it, and it covers a lot of this stuff so if you're interested in that Maybe I said the room wrong. If you can't find it, let me know and I'll send you a link on Discord or something. So, where were we? We got this packet. We're sending username and password. We were going to do an experiment. And, yeah, that ha there's no way that's timed out. Uh, we're going to do an experiment to see if we can change the way it cycles. So, we'll send this over to Intruder, which allows us to set positions and perform an attack using a word list. We're gonna set our password position first, set our username position second, and see if the order in which we set these matters. So the next step is we're gonna set it as cluster bomb. That way it tries all usernames with all passwords. Our first position, or our, the first one to set is position two. And we're gonna load the usernames. And then in position one, we're gonna load the passwords just the short list see if we can cause some lockouts and then we'll start the attack and see if see if it works the way that I think it works now let's take a look at one of these indeed it does not work the way I thought it worked so we are gonna stop this and we're gonna just switch discard we're gonna switch the order of these so no matter how, no matter what order you set the positions in, burp will pick, it, I don't know how to say this, when you're assigning the payload, it will consider the earliest position, not time earliest, but position wise. Um, so it, it automatically knows this is position one. I set this one first, it's not chronological, it's positional, I think is what I'm trying to say. So in order to do what we wanna do, unless there's some setting somewhere that I don't know about, I'm gonna need to change this request a little bit and reorder it. That way passwords are first, we'll be cycling passwords instead of usernames. Um, now, I think that's all we would need to change. Let's go ahead and try it again and see if we can get some lockouts. So, we have username Carlos, password 12345, cool. Now I'm gonna set an option, yeah, I'll set an option for um, the grep match to see if we can find invalid username or password in the responses.
And then it gets mad because the attack's running and I'm trying to make some additions to it. Still no lockout, so... Well, maybe Carlos is not valid. Maybe it only locks out when you have a valid username. So all the posts... Uh, yeah, I'm a mechanic, so messing with stuff is transferable skill. True. I agree. What the heck is going on on Discord? Oh, that's Gabriel. Okay. Mike's on Discord too. <laughs> Mike's hopping back and forth with me. Oh, dude, that's exactly what I was going to say. So we're still not getting any lockouts. Might have to look at a hint here. Oh! Bum, bum, bum. All right, I can see we got more viewers now. Nobody wants to chat though. Now's the time to chat, guys. I'm uh, no, I'm just, I'm just busting on you. Um, waiting for an attack to run, so it actually might be a little while. What is going on? Let's turn the proxy off. HSTS. Oh my gosh, I I loathe you, HSTS. Got some friendly emotes. Oh, okay. It took a minute for him to load on my side. I thought you were just sending blank messages. CPIX hug. CPIX train. CPIX train 2. <laughs> Cats. I'm not a huge cat fan. No offense to anybody that is, it's just not my thing. When I met my wife, she had two cats. We no longer have those cats. I hope I didn't just crash the lab. That could be detrimental to my attack. Hmm. Nah, it's still up. I should probably go to this website manually. Instead of, actually, let's see if it's the same. OA F2 OA F2 nice they noticed we had one already started up actually it probably just starts up with the same URL every time arc on 064 I have crashed their lab several times yeah uh, I guess depending on what you mean by crashed I have uh, had a few labs time out on me I guess just arc on okay there's just too many of them. <laughs> There's, I have the same problem. My the usernames I pick, the handles I pick, very popular handles, including timeouts. Okay, I've never actually crashed it, but I've definitely timed it out before. It's a nice handle. I like it. I usually just use my name in it somehow, but there's a lot of Nates out in the world, and they've all taken. We've all, we all think similar, similarly apparently. So let's just leave this attack up. We'll let it run. Let's see if we get anything. Um, is there a hint for this at all? There's a solution. So we're going to have to really give up if we want this. It's 14 years old. I have no idea how it became a thing. Huh. Arc on. Yeah, that's pretty... Uh, I mean, I could see where you'd pick ARK, A-R-K, because it's very, I think it's a very aesthetic word, ARK, and then ON, 
maybe you were reading about Noah and you're like reading the part where he says on the ark <laughs> it is a take on word warlord oh gotcha all my kids have used it so they have killed it to some extent <laughs> that's a bummer I don't do any online gaming or anything like that so I uh, although I used to use the handle Nate the Great because there's a, a child book series and I used to love it because it had my name in it and um, so I, I set up a few accounts under that handle and it was using Leet speak so I swapped out some of the characters for numbers symbols and then I was just doing a search on Facebook and I found this guy who uses that as his rapper name so I, I reached out to him and I was like man you got my name what's going on here and we just kind of we went back and forth a little bit. I know the book. Yeah, yeah, he loves pancakes or his dog loves pancakes or something. It's a great book. I used to read those all the time. Honestly, um, I kind of attribute that stuff. I was always interested in mysteries, solving mysteries and solving puzzles. And I think that that kind of, uh, that kind of mentality or that kind of enjoying that type of activity might have been a precursor to hacking. Who knows? I guess we could read through some of this stuff while we wait for the attack to finish. It's not important to the challenge, but let's see what kind of content these guys made for us to look at. The reverse bucket list. I have yet to create a bucket list. Mainly because I am not very advent reverse bucket list. Isn't this just like a to-do list or is this things that you never want to do in your life? Mainly because I'm not very adventurous and don't want to do anything that will scare my pants off. With weekends wasting away a huge dose of apathy. Uh, yeah. Open sands. I love you. Oh, for sure. My mom gave me puzzles to do when I was a kid. Going to the doctors every week for two years. Oh, man. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you had to go to the doctor that much, but... Yeah, I think solving puzzles is really good. Uh, it keeps you mentally on edge and definitely good for brain elasticity, I think it is. Either elasticity or plasticity, I don't remember the term. But basically prevents you from getting old and bitter, right? Yeah, nothing yet. Plasticity. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mike Firo says, learn to organize and incorporate code into my very laggy and intense MySpace page. <laughs> MySpace. Goodness, that's a long time ago. You're showing your age there. And I enjoy it because I remember MySpace. I caught the back end of MySpace. Facebook was just coming up when I was coming of age. So I'm a, a mostly Facebook kid, but did a little bit of MySpace. And at the same time, around that time, everybody in my, I think I was in middle school then, everybody in my middle school, it seemed like, had their own personal website on this site called Pixo. And that was pretty fun because it involved, um, it was a website builder similar to what you could see nowadays. I think Wix has a very similar website builder and you're able to put in your own HTML and JavaScript and stuff like that. So that was kind of my entry to web apps. I'm about to be 30. Hey, me too. Yep. Same age. Oh, I'm ancient. I grew up on BBS and IRC. I'm 50. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, I enjoy learning about the history of of the hacking space. So, one of my favorite things to learn about is um, like phone freaking and how that came about. There's a pretty good. Was it on Audible? I think there's a good series for free. Of it's like a like a play, an audio play, but it takes place in the time that Bell was. Um, everywhere and someone found this little blue whistle in their cereal box and they started uh making calls for free that's how i got started freaking yeah nice yeah so i mean 
if you're interested, I can try to dig up the uh, the play thing. It was I listened to the whole thing. It's kind of short, but it's good content. Captain Crunch, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it might be a nostalgic thing if you wanted to listen to it. Just let me know. I'll see if I could dig it up. But that space, I mean, it, it makes sense, right? So that's kind of how um, that's kind of how I got into hacking as well. It was mostly trying to take advantage of the consumer technology that was around me. And, for, uh, for example... Uh, okay, this is a good story. So when I was a kid, my mom, bless her heart, she she cared about me so much, cared about us so much, that she limited our time on the computer. And I think that that's awesome. I try to do the same thing for my kids. Uh, but at the time, when I was a kid, I did not think that was awesome. So one day, I used my 30 minutes to figure out how to... Hey, J Money, what's up? Um, I used my... 30 minutes to figure out how I could hack into the computer and I'm trying to remember the technique I don't think I built a USB drive and booted live it was Windows XP so if I remember right I was able to just go into safe mode and then boot safe mode without command prompt or safe mode with command prompt or something which allowed me to get command line and then reset the password from there but that doesn't sound right. You shouldn't be able to do that. I can't remember if XP allowed you to do that without a password. Or maybe I did have to build a USB drive. Um, but then essentially, you know, once you get command line access, it's as easy as net user and then your username star. You can change a password or clear it out. So I ended up clearing out the password and then uh, just there was no password anymore. So then I could sneak downstairs late at night and I think my mom was unable to find the setting, like where to set up the password. I think someone helped her set it up originally. So we went for a while with no password and uh, we were able to just kind of hop on whenever. It's it pretty fun. But then after that, I got into, I don't know if you'd call it modern day freaking, but just like modifying cell phones. So my first cell phone was... Um, a Motorola Razor and I was able to do some changes to that um, I think it was like a hex header that I pulled up on the computer plugged it in through the USB cord and then just like flipping bits I was able to change the background color that actually I don't think it was that phone that was my first phone but it was like an LG something um, like an older flip phone I, I don't remember my memory's hazy this is a long time ago cell phone cloning I never did any cloning um, I was never out to like get anything for free it was strictly just like modding my own stuff well take that back right who hasn't downloaded a movie but um, mostly as far as freaking it was just me modifying my own devices or uh, one time I got a broken phone from somebody it was a crazer at the time I had had uh, a razor but I lost it while I was snowboarding and somebody in my high school had a crazer and the hinge was busted on it so I I think I gave her like 10 bucks for it or something but then I ended up ordering a ribbon cable and a new hinge online for like 15 bucks replaced it myself and had a, a fully working crazer for like 30 bucks and at the time that was awesome it was like a $600 phone at the time so I was pumped for that have you ever did cell phone hacking yeah that's what we were just talking about J money um, I haven't done anything lately. I haven't done any like uh, Android web app or Android application hacking or anything like that. But I'm interested in it for sure. I, I've built a few Android applications and just kind of played around with it. For the most part, though, it's just modding my own stuff call me old call my old buddies when I move back to the USA oh sorry I missed the first part of that okay I had lived in the UK as a young kid and that was the initiative to phone freaker 
call my old buddies when I move back to the USA. Wow. Oh, Net Hunter. I've played in Net Hunter. And still have the app that I did hacking on my friends. I shut down my cousin's internet and shut it down as <laughs> his phone. Ran an ad block on my S Tub Plus. Nice. Hacking my friends' laptops. Yeah, I played with Net Hunter for a little while. Let me see if I have it nearby. Oh no, actually I think it's in my wife's office. Actually, uh, I'll just pull it up on screen here. TP-Link, USB. Oops, sorry about that guys. That was probably pretty loud to you. Oh man, I can't remember the model of it. Um, so, I... <laughs> I installed NetHunter on a Nexus 5, and I got one of these. It was similar to this, but it's a little bit bigger and bulkier. It was a little bit older. And it was white. We'll search for white. This one. It's this one right here. So, I actually put Velcro on the back of this, and then used an OTG cable to plug it into the Nexus 5 because the chipset in the Nexus 5, the Wi-Fi chipset is not, um, you're not able to flip it into monitor mode. So you can't do any wireless assessment assessing. And so I, <laughs> I used to walk around with this dang phone. I put it in like a little case and then I Velcroed this to the back of it and had an OTG cable. And I just walk around like essentially just war driving, but I was walking and I always thought it would be cool to develop an app that would try to geolocate based on signal strength. So you could just walk around and survey an area and then based on signal strength and your movement, it would estimate like where is this access, accent, where is this access point located? Um, I just, I never did anything like that, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. What else is going on here? Hacking my friend's laptops. Still have all the apps. Tried to hack a police car. Ooh. Um. Yeah, that's illegal, J Money. Mr. Robot made us all think we was hackers in real life. Yeah, I was doing this before I saw Mr. Robot though, so it was kind of a cool like addition on top of it. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Robot's definitely inspiring. Uh, watching, and I I really enjoy that it's not like war games. It's not like some of the older Hollywood movies where you know you get like the pictures on screen and that's hacking um they definitely did their research for mr robot so the attacks that they're using the commands they're using for the most part from what i saw are pretty realistic and that's uh that's pretty cool hollywood hacking exactly but that's fun to watch too right i mean it's a movie who cares? You know what I mean? If you're there for the hacking instead of the plot line, you're going to be disappointed, that's for sure. What about that ATM thing in Terminator? I'm going to have to watch the Terminator or rewatch the Terminator. Was that even real? Sorry, I'm just in the webcam here. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. I did hear on, was it Darknet Diaries or like the Defensive Security Podcast maybe, uh, there was an attack or there were, what was it? There was some very large attack that was geared towards banks and... Um, essentially they ins installed root kits on ATMs and then they would just have somebody like walk pot. Yeah, exactly. Angelina Jolie. That's why we were there. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Lost my train of thought on that one. Good call there. <laughs> oh, there's uh some kind of root kit 
planted on a bunch of ATMs. And so they would have, uh, I think they hired mules to just walk around and then show up at this ATM at a certain time and it would just start spitting out money. And I saw a video of it on, on YouTube where, you know, this, this money mule just walks past to go collect. And I mean, that's kind of an interesting attack vector too, because you see those IOT devices or those, uh, those kiosk devices and they, um, usually they're using an old operating system. It's not updated very often. And that's like, man, yeah, secure the perimeter of the bank, but then <laughs> don't patch your, uh, don't patch your money machine. Yeah. All right, you guys, I am not sure that this is correct. It's going to take a long time for this attack to run. I just want to know that what's going on here. What am I doing wrong? I'm definitely doing something wrong. With burp running, investigate the login page and submit an invalid username and password. Send the post login request to burp intruder. Did. Select the attack type cluster bomb. Add a payload position to the username. Add a blank payload to the end of the request body. Clicking add twice. The request should look something like this. Me? What? What's this? What? I never would have guessed that. Burp Sweet is the most dangerous app on the planet. Oh man, he rip Barnaby Jack who had the ATM spit out money at DEF CON. Yeah. If you become a Jedi with it, you the man. Oh, with Burp, yeah. Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, I mean, for the most part, I feel comfortable with Burp Community Edition. It's just, it's unfortunate that you can't get experience with some of the most useful features unless you're employed um, by somebody who has a license for you, or I guess if you pay for a license yourself, but on the payloads tab, let's pull us up side by side. Let's see what we were doing wrong here. On the payloads tab, add the list of usernames. So this is, this isn't making a whole lot of sense to me. So we're gonna leave this password here, and we have an invalid username. We selected the correct attack type, but it wants us to do this. Let's go ahead and just do it. We'll we'll just get her done and see if we can figure out how it works as we do it. Um. So now we need something like this. Okay, add the list of usernames to the first payload set for the second one, select null payloads type. This is not at all in the learning that I did for this module. So we're gonna clear this out and, whoops. Clear it out and we'll load the username list. And then we will clear this out and load. Oh no, we're not gonna use this one. On the payloads tab, add the list of usernames to the first set. For the second set, select null payloads type. Never used this before. Null payloads. Choose the option to generate five payloads. Okay. This will effectively cause each username to be repeated five times start the attack so this is i mean this is what i was trying to do i'm a bit confused oh i guess yeah we don't need valid passwords so we might as well use null data instead of valid data that makes sense it makes sense it's not working as described This will effectively cause each username to be repeated five times. I guess it doesn't say five times in a row. 
Start the attack in the request result. In the results, notice the response for one of the usernames were longer than the response when using other usernames. Study the response more closely and notice that it contains different error message. You've made too many incorrect login attempts. Make a note of this username. All right, well, that's a good enough hint for now. We'll go back to it if we need to. Let's see, I heard MS got hacked. Uh, what's going on in chat? UPS headquarters was looking for advanced burp suite person and started out at 175k a year with two years of experience. Yes, J Money. I would uh I would not um I would not be surprised. It's it's a very valuable skill set and it is a very um let's see it's a valuable build it's a valuable skill set because these technologies that we're playing with these technologies that we're hacking on not a lot of people understand how to do this first of all so there's a low supply of people that can do it but there's a huge demand for people that can do it because these technologies are protecting money they're protecting customer data they're protecting the crown jewels of a company so it is a very well-paid field because of all of that adding up uh, I lost the chat. I lost it. Sorry, guys. I lost it. I saw something about sneakers, though. And that was a. I just recently watched sneakers for the first time. That's a good movie. Microsoft confirmed server misconfiguration led to 65,000 plus companies data leaked. Ooh, that's no good. I thought I saw someone say something about sneakers. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there it is. Ark said, war games and sneakers were not too bad for the time. Oh, that's a good point. So I never really hacked on the old technology um, and I've, I've never really had any hands-on experience with it. So I guess I'm not sure how accurate war games is, but I'm sure at the time, like compared to hackers, for example, hackers was like, <laughs> that's Hollywood hacking that's Hollywood hacking at its finest there's a good series on I think it was Netflix and I think it's called code but it's about this guy who's like cracking code and stuff and that was really cool it was I think it was pretty realistic but it was also very complex what he was doing it was very it was very um, oriented around cryptography and breaking code War dialing was what we did. Okay, that's real stuff then, huh? Nice. People are smart. <laughs> True, but people are also dumb. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's fun, right? It's part of the beauty of life. Even the same person is both smart and dumb in different facets of life. Crypto is hard shit. Yes, indeed. That is also a well-paid field because there again, um, it's a very important thing. It's used everywhere. And not a lot of people understand it. Well, I don't see this uh, response yet that has a different size payload or a different size response. I'm just going to continue using the grep match. You know, I kind of want to see. It's me. I'm dumb. Nah, man. You're a mechanic. You know a whole bunch of shit that I don't know. Give yourself some credit. You can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Um, I still don't have anything here. I did federal VTE about crypto for law enforcement and still don't get it. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Oh, goodness. What's going on here? Uh, 
This is gonna take a while. I kinda wanna throw Hydra at it just to see what happens. But I feel like the server is rate limiting it anyway, so that's what happened last time I used Hydra in these labs. Maybe I just need to find something to do. In fact, that makes me think, let's do Federal Virtual Training Environment, Public Courses, and the topic. Oh, okay, gotcha. Gotcha, yeah, it's pretty tough to grasp, especially if you're not like tunnel visioned on it. I feel like if you tunneled in on it and used it every day, it'd probably get a little bit easier, but definitely a lot of stuff going on in crypto. But I'm gonna take a five minute break. We're gonna, uh, you know, give everybody a chance to use the restroom, move around a little bit, grab something to drink. I, de I definitely need something to drink, but I'll be back in five minutes. We'll see you guys then.
Boom. All right, we're back now. And the music died. Uh, gonna find some new music for us to listen to. Personally, I really like this Leo guy. He does uh, metal covers of popular music. And I just, I really like his style. I love to, I love to listen to this stuff. The words sometimes can get to be too much. So if you're struggling to focus because of the words, or if I'm struggling to focus because of the words, let me know and we'll switch it out. Metalocalypse, though. <laughs> Um, we still don't really have much going on with this attack. So, we'll let her run for a while. See if we have any different lengths yet. Nope, oh, everything's the same length. Am I even in the right attack window? Yeah, we'll get rid of this one. Oh, that's my YouTube uploading some stuff, trying to get caught up. Man, not a whole lot going on with this. I wish it didn't take so long. Sorry, guys. Um, I guess we could start looking at the next module while we let the attack run. I guess we could read through this quick as well, make sure that uh, we're doing it right. Yeah, so after that, we're going to use Sniper once we know the username. I think we're doing it right. We just need to wait. Be patient. Have some patience. All right. Username enumeration. Uh, we're currently working on this one via account lock. One way which websites try to prevent Bruce forcing is to lock the account if certain suspicious criteria are met. Usually a set number of failed login attempts. Just as with normal login errors, responses from the server indicating that an account is locked can also help an attacker enumerate users. Locking an account offers a certain amount of protection against targeted brute forcing of a specific account. However, this approach fails to adequately prevent brute force attacks in which the attacker is just trying to gain access to any random account they can. For example, the following method can be used to work around this kind of protection. Establish a list of candidate usernames that are likely to be valid. This could be through username enumeration or simply based on a list of common usernames. I think I already read this last time, but we'll read it again. It's, uh, it's not doing anybody harm. Decide on a very small short list of passwords that you think at least one user is likely to have. So this would be something like the current season and then the current year or previous seasons and years. Uh, at least that's the example that is given by Heath Adams in the Cyber Mentor training. Crucially, the number of passwords you select. Oh, uh, but speaking about common passwords, I always remember um, War Games and the, the password list they had there. God, sex, and love. So those are always good to throw in as well if you're accepting three character passwords. Crucially, the number of passwords you select must not exceed the number of login attempts allowed. For example, if you have worked out that it is three attempts, so we're preventing lockouts. So we could just do a quick spray and pray, 
but we need to know the lockout policy and we need to know that we're not going to trigger a lockout, especially if we're in a real environment. Using a tool such as Burp Intruder, try each of the selected passwords with each of the candidate usernames. Little self plug for Leo here. That's the other thing I really like about him. He plugs himself at the end of all of his videos and it's usually different. The, the music is usually different. So he's like creating another plug every time. He wants subscribers. In fact, here you go, Leo, a free plug from me. Uh, here's his channel, Frog Leap Studios. Go check it out. If you're digging this music, subscribe. I am not currently subscribed, so I'm going to go ahead and ding the bell as well. But let's, uh, let's give him some free subscribers because I'm borrowing his music, whether he knows it or not, um, because I enjoy it. He makes great music. And I hope that that doesn't make him mad. I'm not monetizing. I'm not trying to make money off of it. It's just good tunes while I study. All right, account locking also fails to protect against credential stuffing attacks. Um, so that's kind of what we were just talking about, I think, credential stuffing. No, credential stuffing is more like getting valid username password combos from a breach and just spraying that towards the login form. This involves using a massive dictionary of username password pairs. So we would use like the pitchfork and burp for this. Um, we don't actually want to try every password with every username. We just want to do the valid combinations of username passwords found in breaches. Composed of genuine login credentials stolen from data breaches. Credential stuffing relies on the fact that many people reuse the same username and password on multiple websites, and therefore, there is a chance that some of the compromised credentials in the dictionary are also valid on the target website. Account locking does not protect against any credential stuffing. Uh, I just randomly add words in while I'm reading. Account locking does not prevent, does not protect against credential stuffing because each username is only being attempted once. Credential stuffing is particularly dangerous because it could sometimes result in the attacker compromising many different accounts with just a single automated attack. So don't reuse credentials. I think last time I went into this a little bit and talked about the Ashley Madison breach and how there was a lot of high value targets in that uh, breach. So if any of them were reusing passwords, that could potentially grant access to some high security systems. User rate limiting. Another way websites try to prevent brute force attacks is through use rate, user rate limiting. In this case, making too many login requests in a short period of time causes your IP to be blocked. Typically, the IP can only be unblocked in one of the following ways. Automatically after a certain period of time has elapsed. Manually by the administrator. Manually by the user after successfully completing a CAPTCHA. User rate limiting is sometimes preferred to account locking due to it being less prone to username enumeration and denial of service attacks. However, it is still not completely secure, as we saw in an example of of an, an as we saw in an example of in an earlier lab. I think maybe there's some some grammar issues going on there. Um, as we saw in an earlier lab, there are several ways an attacker can manipulate their apparent IP in order to bypass the block. Yes, we did do this. Um, I think we used the X forwarded for request header and we were able to put random IPs in there and make it look like we're coming from all kinds of different IPs so that we wouldn't get locked out. As the limit is based on the rate of HTTP requests sent from the user's IP address, it is sometimes also possible to bypass this defense if you can work out how to guess multiple passwords with a single request. English be difficult. Yes, it do be difficult, <laughs> indeed. But Spanish be difficulter if you grew up speaking English. I tried to take Spanish. No bueno. I could not do it. Um, I just, I don't know. My, I can learn programming languages, but I just, I don't know. Couldn't get Spanish. Couldn't figure it out. So, uh, how's our attack looking? Did it finish? was the one that was currently being processed.
<laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Tyler Ramsby is an emoji now on the Discord server, and it is incredible. It's amazing. I'm going to use that one all the time. That's awesome. Uh, oh, shoot. battery is low have you ever seen Naham sec do port swigger stuff he makes it look like nothing no I haven't he's probably been doing it longer um, and that's good, you know. If you're if you're learning something, it's probably clunky. That's, and that's part of why. Um, that's part of. I guess hopefully that's part of the value of what I'm doing here, right? I am not prepared. I am not an expert. I am a window into the newbiness and the learning. So that's why we are here. Yeah, exactly. Right. But Naham Sek, I've actually never heard of him, so I'll have to look into that because when I was doing Hack the Box, um, I think it was Ipsec. Ipsec videos changed the way that I do network pen testing. And for the better. Changed it for the better. I was able to uh, you know, learn some pretty cool tools that are very useful, such as Crack Map Exec. And yeah. We'll have to take a look at that. In fact, we got time. Check it out. J Money coming in clutch with the link. Let's see what's going on. Uh, we'll get the music paused. Bring this on over. Beyond DEFCON. Bug Hunter. Oh, yeah, okay. Bug Hunter's methodology. This is, um, I don't remember who does this, but I joined Bug Crowd, and this was one of the recommendations. Oh, yeah, okay, I know who this is. I've only seen a few of his videos. I've never seen him do Poor Swigger. Does he have Poor Swigger stuff on here? There it is. Let's check it out. Oh, can't hear you, man. Turn your mic on. You're muted. There we go. Oh, but. This is How do I do this, you guys? I need to get um, this. He's on a different level. Let me see again. It's supposed to be here. But I'm not seeing anything for... <laughs> From now on, I'm not going to I'm not going to stream. I'm just going to pull up a YouTube video and stream it on Twitch. Is this against the community guidelines yeah, or the the Twitch guidelines. I feel like I'm breaking some rules yeah. by doing that. But yeah, this definitely looks uh, a little bit different than how I'm doing it. I'm sure he's a bit more experienced. Uh, Naham Sek, I've watched him interview some pretty talented pen testers, and that's, that's pretty awesome. He's doing, um, I think he does bug bounty as well. I could be wrong on that, but that's how I found him ultimately when I started looking into bug bounty. I saw him for the first time. Didn't realize, you know, I didn't remember his name or his handle, but that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that with us, Jay Money. Let's get the music playing again. Maybe 
Did I kill it for good? Oh, there it is. Stock, yeah, I think Stock was the one, or Stoke was the one that he was interviewing actually when I watched. Naham Khan. He does a lot with community. He has a conference. No shit. Okay. That's pretty cool. I'll have to look into that. Is it stock or stoke? I can't remember. I feel like it's like a... Um, I can't... I feel like there's like an umlaut or whatever it's called over the O. So it's like stoke or stonk. I don't know. Cracks me up. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of good resources online. That's awesome. I appreciate you guys sharing stuff like that too because I am, uh, you know, born and raised in small town South Dakota. So a lot of this stuff is pretty new to me, just kind of entering the space when it comes to web apps. And so it's like, yeah, get a little bootstrap on the resources and, and the heroes, the people to look up to. That's one of the best way you can achieve your goals is by finding somebody to emulate and then um, you know, somebody has already carved out the path that you want to the take. It's almost guaranteed. So just find that person or find those people and cram it into your life and you'll end up there, right? Goodness gracious, this is taking a long time, you guys. I'll take another five minute break while we let this run. Uh, hopefully we get some answers by then, but we'll see you guys in five. Yeah. 
all right back with more and I'm just experimenting here with using Hydra instead of using burp so in the past I'm I've used Hydra to attack login forms and it doesn't have the same limitation that you get with burp sweet community where they throttle your request speed so I was gonna try to use a five password list um, and see if we can get this done any quicker by using Hydra. Last time I tried this, I discovered that um, the server itself is actually throttling, or maybe not throttling, but uh, it's not responding very quick. So the attack taking long might actually be a problem with Port Swigger and not a problem with Burp. I guess both are from Polar Swigger, but you know what I mean. Hopefully, it's server side, not client side. Um, we need the URL. Uh, here. And we also need HTTPS post form. Login. Username equals user. And password equals pass invalid username or password let's see if that goes any quicker cool so it's working And it does look like it's going quicker. So this is multi-threaded. It's sending multiple requests at the same time. We'll see which one gets done first. And if Hydra wins, it'll be pretty impressive. We've been running the burp attack for a while. Four hundred and twenty tries per minute, four hundred and twenty tries in one minute, five hundred and ninety to do in two minutes. So we'll definitely I think we'll definitely get this one done first. Will it work? I'm not sure. All right, we found the username, it's AR. So we can stop this attack. Uh, we'll pause it and I'm just gonna use this. We'll use Hydra to just get her done quicker. So now we gotta figure out 
and because we locked the account AR is a valid user but it's locked now so we have to figure out how to unlock it and log in as AR let's see if we can figure something out AR Please try again in one minute. We just gotta wait a minute. That's not too bad. So I'm not even wearing my watch right now. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just wait a minute. Does anybody know how to get chat? Good night. I'm falling asleep. All right. I don't blame you, Mike. I'm about to fall asleep too, even though I just woke up uh, not that long ago. I had a pretty good nap. But does anybody know off the top of their head how to get chat? I would like to show chat like right here um, or somewhere on screen. I'm going to have to do a little bit more diving into like the fun stuff you could do with Twitch. Perfect. Look at that. We're not locked out anymore. Now we just need to set our password to AR, and then we'll use the full password list to attack this account. Oh no. I forgot to switch to a lowercase L. I think stream overlay. Yes, I use OBS. Well, I done did that wrong. We'll switch that back over to, that's the fail message. But we're going to trigger lockout, that's the thing. How are we... We're going to have to factor in some kind of time delay. So I'm going to actually have to do this in burp, come to think of it. We know the username. Um, I think we're locked out again. Yes, we're locked out again. So how can we prevent the lockout or add in some kind of weight um, we'll set a position here set the payload to passwords Um, payload processing, you can define rules to perform very proce various processing on tasks on each payload before it's used. wonder if there's something in options. I wonder if there's some kind of wait. Can we tell it to wait? Here's another question I have. Let's go ahead and see. Invalid username and password. Let's just send that a bunch until we get the lockout. So I'm watching the content length. It's 2876. Oh, now it's two. We're locked out now, I think. Cool. So we're locked out. Let's try a different username. And then we'll. Sw uh, Yep, and then we'll switch back to AR and see if that's enough to make it not lock us out. No, so we're locked out no matter what. Do we, are we able to log in as Wiener Peter? No. So the logic flaw I think is just that the lockout is only a minute long. F fuzz is really good for this and it does time limiting. Ooh, nice. Um let's see if I have that on there. Do you mean fuff? Alright, there's no man entry. Oh, I spelled it wrong, that's why.
getting post parameter fuzzing. Um, I think I'll stick to burp for now because the the job that I'm getting into, I think we use burp. But I appreciate the recommendation. Fuff is actually a great tool. I think it's uh, it's an acronym, right? It stands for fuzz faster, you fool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I really like command line tools. But we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be working on burp most of the time here. Um, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. I don't need to beat it too long. Anywho, let's read the answer so that I can actually learn something instead of just testing and trying to figure it out myself. On the payloads tab, add the list of usernames. We've already done that. We've done the null payloads. Um, now switch over, where did it say that? Switch over to sniper, set the username as the username you identified in the password, attack list, the payload set, and grep extraction rule for the error message, start the attack. In the results, look at the grep extract column. Notice that there are a couple of different error messages, but one of the responses did not contain any error messages. Make, oh, 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 oh. So maybe the one minute lockout is not actually the logic flaw. Maybe the logic flaw is that the user is only locked out unless they provide valid credentials, in which case it's not actually a lockout. So the lockout is, I mean, I'm sure there's some code trying to do the lockout, but it's not actually locking you out. That's an interesting logic flaw. We're in repeater. Let's get back to intruder. We have a position set. Uh, let's switch to the sniper. We already have the password list loaded. That's all we need. So we have right about here, um, that's also a 200. I feel like the correct login is going to be a 302, at least in the past. In these challenges, once you get properly logged in, it redirects you to the My Account page. But they were saying we need to do a grep extract of some kind. I think what they meant was grep match. I don't blame them. I also struggle keeping the two straight. So we're going to do grep match for invalid username and password. Um, maybe. And then we'll take a look at what the other error message was for lockouts. Mm. 
And we'll throw that into our grip match as well. So we're looking for one that doesn't have either of these filled out. Uh, so here we have three tries and then a lockout, three tries and then a lockout, three tries and then a lockout. Well, that's worthless. Let's sort the data and see if we can find something. Oh, there it is. The username is AR and the password is Austin. Boom, got her done. That took way long. That's like the second half of last stream and gosh, two hours into this one too. My goodness, this was a challenging one. Oh, let's turn proxy off. Where are we at now? The last one, and then I think, oh man, <laughs> we're, we're almost done with password-based authentication, and then we have, uh, we have a lot more, a few other types of modules related to authentication. So we are in this one right now. Next up, we have vulnerabilities in multi-factor, and then we also have, which hopefully that's shorter. Hopefully these are both shorter. Eh, there's not too much in there. This one's a little bit longer. All right, well, what time is it? 11 o'clock, we can keep working. I'm gonna take a five minute break though. I can feel myself starting to get mental fatigue and um, I think I'll actually take a little bit longer of a break this time. So once I come back, we'll be going after uh, this expert broken brute force protection, multiple credentials per request. No idea what the heck we're going to have to do here, but we'll attack that when we get back. Um, so you might see me come back. I plan on doing a 15-minute break this time. 
So it'll be three cycles of the five minute break screen. So we'll see you guys. Actually, I might just like set a timer for 15 minutes and let the timer on here run out, but I'll definitely be back in 15. We'll see you guys then.
All right, we're back for more. And we're about to do the, I think this is the first time I've done an expert module. So 15 minute break was a, probably a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff and burp. And we'll start a new session. So this one, I'm hoping we can just get her done quick. I'm not gonna mess around too much. If um, if I can't figure it out, if I get stuck at all, I'm not gonna hesitate to look at hints or the answer. Uh, this is all about learning. This is something I've never really played with before. So let's see what we're getting ourselves into. The lab is titled Broken Brute Force Protection, Multiple Credentials Per Request. This lab is vulnerable due to a logic flaw in its brute force protection. To solve the lab, brute force Carlos's password and then access his account page. So... I guess what we're doing now is using the techniques that we just learned or the possible brute force protection flaws that we just learned about what is this oh it's because I'm half screen mode um, so essentially it's kind of like a mini oh great song um, it's like a mini what is that called when you do the random challenge is they're testing our ability to identify the vulnerability so we have a known username we have potential password list this is the same passwords that we've been using and we know the username is Carlos so that's pretty awesome let's go ahead and turn on intercept we'll get to the login page and then we'll turn on proxy and we're gonna try just uh, Carlos and password all lowercase. Something's not working. Is the page actually? Oh, I wonder if I need to refresh and it, yeah. Turn intercept back off, turn it back on. We'll try this again. Okay, this time we're sending JSON instead of just a parameter list. I believe it's JSON anyway, let's see. Content type, text plane. Huh. Oh, let's try it. Send this over to repeater so we can play with it for a little bit. We're just getting invalid username or password. Um, let's copy that. And then we'll send this over to intruder. We'll just go straight for the brute force, see what happens. See if we could trigger like a lockout or something clear all of our positions we're just gonna set the position here and then we'll load our password list and we'll add a grep match for no 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 for this and then we'll start the attack see what happens So we have two failed logged in attempts, two failed login attempts, and then our third one seems to be like a lockout possibly. We'll let it keep running because maybe we will, uh, maybe this is similar to the timing based one. Um, we're going to add this to our list of things to look for. 
So we'll be able to see when the lockout stops. It says it'll be locked out for a minute, so we'll be able to see it flip back and forth. This time we got three attempts. I suppose last time we did two. I sent one manually. So this is kind of funny. This song originally is pretty heavy. So to have Leo, I think this is still Leo. Yeah, Leo is covering it. And to me, it almost sounds more like <laughs> not rockabilly, but like metal ability. <laughs> I think it's the instruments that he's using. Great voice, though. Leo's got a great voice. I love listening to him sing this stuff. If I ever do decide to monetize. Um, or like if YouTube gets mad at me or if, uh, if I have to be more legit with my music, I would consider asking Leo if I could get like access or sign some kind of agreement or buy it or I don't know. I don't know what you, how you do that, but. There's this empty info down here, and I don't know what the heck that's about. Is that part of the form data? It doesn't look like it. Oh, we got JavaScript as the, uh, I don't even know how to, what to call it, but there's some JavaScript on the front end that is doing the web request. Let's see if we could take a look at that. Maybe that'll give us some clues. JavaScript, submit login path constant form to JSON so here I assume we're just taking the form and making it JSON data fetch what a difficult thing to learn how to do if you're not familiar with async so fetch login path method post form body form data then response if response.status equals 302 then so I mean they told us right there that we're looking for a 302 response for valid login else response.text dot then t document open document write t document close so we're just writing the uh, um, I don't know error message I guess onto the page with that so we're looking for a 302 oh nothing yet it'll probably be sorted this way though we're just about through the word list got about two or one one more request left to complete and I don't think we have the answer yet All right, so we can do 
three bad requests, and then we get a lockout. We'll just write this stuff down. My memory is not the greatest. Three invalid logins cause a user based lockout. Um, we probably don't need this attack anymore. We'll add on here the lockout period is one minute. And let's see if there's any way that we can unlock it manually. <clears throat> or else we'll have to figure out how to make Burp wait for a minute. Peace out. See you next stream. Hey, thanks for joining ARC. We'll see you around. Um... Let's go back to repeater. We'll play with it a little bit. See if we can use a different username to unlock it or something. Um, let's try our our provided credentials and see if that works. Maybe we can switch between valid and invalid. Look at that. Okay. So possibly what we can do is cause a lockout and then log in with Wiener Peter and that might clear the lockout maybe not though we'll, we'll give it a try we'll see what happens um, because that typically is with IP based so I guess we don't know for sure if it's user based or IP based but we're about to find out Uh, we're gonna want another attack we don't need that one we'll send this one to intruder as well in another tab this one is gonna be the one we're gonna use for Carlos this one is gonna be the one we're using for Wiener Peter And then we don't have any payloads here, no payload positions, but burp won't run. So we'll add something. Uh, I think last time we did this. And then for a payload, we can just do numbers. And we'll do, uh, oh, you know what? Actually from the reading, um, we actually don't need to do this. We can clear that out. We should be able to set a position, not set a payload, and it'll just run. But then it doesn't know how many times to run. So let's do something else that we learned. We'll add an empty payload there. We'll go to set one and we'll put null and generate 100 payloads. So that'll run a hundred times while we're also running Carlos with a password list. Let's see if that prevents us from getting locked out. And then we'll start this one as well. Oh, buckets. All right, we're gonna pause this. Kind of lost. Uh lost what I was doing there for a second what's going on <laughs> this is absolutely terrible this is the attack we ran uh, we'll just leave that in there we don't we don't need to look at it right now um, this one was not working because we have an invalid payload set Now we'll continue this. Oh uh, no, we'll continue this attack. Actually, we'll just start her over. Discard. And then we'll go back to the main burp window. And we'll run first. We'll run this one to keep us. To keep preventing us from getting locked out. 
Then we'll run this one on top of it. Looks like it's working. No, it's not working. I'm locked out. Um, what's the logic flaw? I guess we could see if there's any way to bypass account lockouts or attack around them. Burp suite, wait during account, lockout, intruder. So I suppose I could drag this in and show you guys what I'm reading about here. Uh, this essentially is a feature request on the Burp Suite forms. And Zach is talking about exactly what we're talking about. Um, essentially, they're trying to send... Here's a good summary Allison had mentioned. Um, so you could use resource pool to evenly space out the, the attempts. But the only way to do that and make it work is... Uh, Goodness, gonna have to pick music again. We'll go back to something without words. Uh, the only way to properly do this would be to space them one minute each. So you're gonna have each attempt is gonna have to wait each minute. So a hundred minutes uh, could take like just under two hours to complete. I'm not on board with that. That seems very lame and Thanks for getting in touch. You might be surprised, but so far this isn't something which we've had many requests for. How often do you find yourself needing this functionality? Would you just need functionality to send X requests, pause for Y seconds, and then sex it? Yeah, exactly. Currently, you may be able to achieve this by writing your own extension within Burp. You could potentially create an extension that registers a payload generator that every three payloads sleeps for 61 seconds before giving you the fourth payload. You could then use that with a resource pool. Only one concurrent request. If you wanted to investigate this further, you can find resources on writing your own extensions here. Cool. Maybe I'll have to get into that unless Allison already did. This can be useful in one of the Burp Academy labs actually. Yeah. That's what we're working on right now. Try five times, wait 60 until the account is unlocked and then try another five. No. Edit, this can be done in Bert. Yeah, here's the lab. Uh, I was going to write, not sure how real world this is this configuration. Seconds. Oh, never mind. I see that you can just brute force the lab even without the account lockout. 
Hello, it's been implemented. Has this been implemented or write up done on how to add this extension? This would be really useful for DVRs. The new apps being deployed have all kinds of loop and burp should be able to do this. Example, if you have four attempts to log in, after which you need to wait five minutes before trying again, provided you are using the same source IP. I saw your YouTube post that an IP can be changed using counter plus variable. Oh my goodness, that's kind of irrelevant. I also would love to have this feature. Thanks for your feedback. Have you taken a look at Turbo Intruder Extension to see if this would help in your scenario? Let's take a look. Turbo Intruder is a burp suite extension for sending large numbers of HTTP requests and analyzing the results. It's intended to complement burp intruder by handling attacks that require extreme speed or complexity. The following features set it apart. Fast, flexible, scalable, convenient. I mean, with all that, this is like straight up marketing. Are you gonna, are you gonna be charging for this? On the other hand, it's undeniably harder to use. <laughs> okay. And the network stack, maybe it's not a sales pitch. The network stack isn't as reliable and battle tested as core burps. Well, I wonder if we can avoid lockouts by throttling our requests. So what would happen if we made it every 20 seconds? Maybe there's like a time window for the lockouts. I know that it locks us out for a minute, but if we slowly request, maybe it won't do a lockout. Maybe it's like you have to do three requests within a minute for it to lock out. We definitely know it's three requests. Um, hmm. Hello, Mr. Faraday Q. Nice to meet you. Good to see you in chat. Sorry, I don't know how long you've been sitting there. Um, I had my chat window hidden. Um, how are we going to test this? We can mess with the resource pool. Create a new one called, what did we call it last time? Slow down, pal. And maximum request is going to be one. Delay is going to be 100. Oh, that'll be one second per request. So it'll be about two minutes to get through the whole list. I'm here for two minutes. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Well, welcome. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to chat whenever. It's uh, pretty chill around here. So, so it looks like we're getting locked out already. So we're going to just stop this. Uh, goodness. I need to do some math. So if it's one minute delay, we want it to wait 20 seconds, 20 times. <laughs> I pulled out a calculator to do 20 times 100, you guys. I'm tired. Um, where were we at? Let's go back to the attack window. And we'll actually make this Uh, to 20,000 I think it is and one what a tough question yeah exactly locked out again all right How can we avoid account lockouts? I guess we could just pause it every time it gets locked out, but gosh, the whole point of this is to automate it. You know what would be a cool cool extension I'm gonna write this down um, grep match 
trigger some action. No, I'm just gonna say trigger wait. Because then we could figure out what the lockout message is. We could figure out, I might do this. I wonder what language burp extensions are. How are they written? I probably won't do it on stream. Maybe I will. Who knows? Mr. Faraday Q, what are we doing right now? We're working on the um, the Port Swigger Web Academy. I'm going through the different learning path uh, modules. I guess I'm, I'm going through the learning path. So we've done SQL injection in the past. We're working on the authentication module right now. And specifically, we're in the password-based authentication. Uh, we've gone through different... Um, different mitigations that can be in place for brute force attempting and we're learning how to bypass those mitigations or identify a flawed brute force protection and fix it so we've gone through these modules we're currently working on this expert module and I just had an idea for a burp suite extension so I was gonna see how burp suite extensions are coded Java, Python, or Ruby? Well, sick. I know Python like the back of my hand, so maybe I'll do something in Python for this. That would be nifty. And actually, I might be able to just write a Python tool to do this real quick. It would be super simple, to be honest. Oh, I missed the most interesting chapter, SQL injection. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's probably still up on Twitch. If you look at the past videos, it's probably still there. Otherwise, I am uploading. I'm currently uploading it to my YouTube channel. So uh, if you wanted to follow along with it at all, or I mean, feel free to jump in here whenever. This is free stuff. So you can get on here, see portswigger.net, make a free account, and you can play along. Uh, or you can just watch too if you want. It's up to you. How hard would it be to do this in Python? And actually, that's really far away from what, like, um, I'm losing focus, I guess, if I do that. Because the purpose of this is to prepare me and, um, it's to prepare me for web application pen testing and to learn how to do things with burp suite so if this is possible in burp suite already i should do that instead of making something new it's good to know how to make your own tools but there are enough tools out there already chances are you can find something that does what you want it to do so there's no point in creating something new that you need to maintain if there's something out there that already does it that being said i love developing new tools even if something out there is already done there's a lot of pride in saying look at what i did and it's usually a pretty good learning experience but i'm just going to dig into the solution we're going to see what's going on here no you could provide multiple passwords with burp running investigate the json page notice that the post login request submits the login credentials in json check did that send this request to burp repeater check in repeater replace a single string value of the password with an array of strings containing all of the candidate passwords send this request it will return real i never would have thought to try that it's json so that should have been a bigger clue than it was the, our data structure being sent is not just a parameter list like it normally is it was JSON, and JSON has the ability you can put an array of values under a key. So that's that's creative. I never would have considered that. I'm glad that I read the answer, because we'd be here for a long time troubleshooting, coding in Python, and that's that's not what I want to do. I enjoy doing that, but my purpose for being here right now is to learn how to use Burp Suite to learn how to pen test web apps 
I can make my own tools on my own time, right? Do they all have to be surrounded in quotes? That'll be kind of annoying. So we will get to do a little bit of coding, just probably in bash though. So we do need to surround each one in quotes, followed by a comma, a new line, and then a tab. Um, so I think the quickest way to do this actually is gonna be just to use PowerShell, load it into a JSON data structure, and then convert, or to load it into an object and then create it into, oh my gosh, I can't talk and think at the same time. So we'll say passwords equals cat passwords. And then passwords for each, we're going to write host. It's been a while since I've used PowerShell, you guys. This is fun. Um, boom, 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 boom. Oh, wait, I was going to load this into... How would we do that? Can I just output it as JSON? Convert to JSON. Sick. And then set clipboard. Let's make sure that that worked. Nope, it did not work. Indeed, it did not. Uh, because I think you need X clip or something like that for it to work. So we'll just manually put it on our clipboard. We've already done quite a bit to just get it, get the payload made. So we're going to be putting it right here in between these brackets. And we'll just use highlight paste. What the Jeff? thought it worked. Didn't it work? Copy selection. There. Now it's working. Perfect. Um, and we actually could probably just send this to repeater. Send we got the 302 found, and then I think we could just steal this session token and we can get in. Let's go to the storage, change our session token to the logged in session, and then we'll need to resubmit a request as that session. No bueno, what on earth? Right click on the request and show in browser, copy URL. I mean, that's kind of what we just did, isn't it? We can't render it. Did I do it wrong? right click and then show response in browser uh, 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 show response in browser I have a question mate all right one second let me get this open quick and then I'll gladly do my best to answer your question Uh oh, what did I do? What did I do? Need to put the proxy back on first. All right, what's this question? Um, I have a question, mate. I'm generally missing the steams on Twitch, the streams. Twitch's notification service doesn't work properly. I want to make notification center with Python. Do you have any ideas for how I can make it? Well, um, first of all, I would check to see if Twitch has any API available. If they don't, then you might be kind of screwed. 
I assume that what you're saying is that you want to manually trigger a notification to Twitch. Or you're saying that you want to have maybe a bot paying attention to the streamers that you follow. And then when they go live, instead of getting the Twitch notification on your phone, you'll trigger some sort of notification service from the bot and either get like a phone call or a text or something like that. Um, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, if that was happening to me, I would troubleshoot the, uh, the Twitch notifications because they work pretty reliably for me. I'm on Android and I, I'm using like the official Twitch app and I, I seem to get them pretty reliably. Maybe check your notification settings. This doesn't seem to be working. already checked notification settings it looks great um yeah i guess you know it, so at that point you have to kind of plan your project then um i know it's tempting to just dive into writing code but it'll get messy real quick and uh you might be able to get it done but if if one of the apis you're using changes it may be hard to maintain so i would recommend starting off with some planning figure out which services you want to use um, I guess, and you would, you'd still need, I think a Twitch API, ideally if Twitch has an API available, which I don't know about, I, I haven't looked into it. If they don't have an API available, there are a few really good libraries you could use in Python to automate the browser and just do some scraping. One of them being beautiful, beautiful soup Four. that may work. Um, otherwise selenium I don't have experience with selenium I've tried it a little bit but it's uh, I just didn't spend very much time with it I, I could help out with beautiful soup 4 if you end up going that way but I mean there again I'm already like diving into the code but these are I mean these are things you could think about in the planning phase like how do I want to accomplish this and which which libraries can I use or which modules can I use that make the most sense? Um, so then the next thing would be, how do you want to be notified? If you just want a notification via Android, that's not something I've done before. I'm not sure how you could accomplish that, but I mean, maybe you could, uh, I don't know, you could set up, this is just the first thing that comes to mind. You could set up like a mock Twitter account and then cause it to like post when somebody goes live is it legal by the way right because the only purpose is to get a notification no nah, it's not illegal you can develop whatever you want like it's only illegal if you're accessing a system that you don't have permission to access and so if you're accessing twitch on your account it doesn't matter if you go there through your browser it doesn't matter if you code something to go there at least in the u.s that's how the law works in the u.s if the system that i'm accessing no matter how i'm accessing it if i'm authorized to access that system i'm within my legal right um now that being said each company each service may have their own terms and conditions so there are certain websites that say it's against the terms of service to use any type of scraping on this website so you may want to check that out and make sure that Twitch would be okay with it. That's again, if they don't have an API available, but they may have an API available. And if that's the case, you could just do it. Um, but honestly, like this is a lot of work just to get notified when somebody's streaming. And if it's, if you look at it as a business decision, the cost may outweigh the value it provides. So, you might just be better off trying to figure out the notifications and why it's not working. Uh, maybe there's a setting in your Twitch account 
where you can say like get notified about this streamer or something like that i know you said you'd already gone through it all but maybe pull up like some twitch official documentation i'm a huge fan of reading the docs you'll learn a ton in there um and just play with it you know because like i said the the cost to develop this i know it's just you and your time but how badly do you want these notifications <laughs> like uh, how much time are you willing to put into it and is it really the best thing you could be doing with your time so hopefully that helps answer the question i don't know that's just my opinion a lot of that stuff was my opinion but if you decide to go you know if you figure out the planning phase if you decide to develop something uh, and you just need like recommendations on how to implement it let me know and i can i can do my best to recommend some stuff the current so this is not working at all oh because freaking intercept is oh my gosh there we go Da da solved because we looked up the answer great so to recap this one had account lockouts if you did too many invalid requests too many being three in a row um, and actually we never ended up finding out Carlos's password but we were able to provide a whole word list in an array as the password value and so one of those happened to be the correct password and that's how we got in this seems like a um i don't know if you'd find this in the wild or not but it seems like an interesting way to attack a login portal that i'd never seen i thought i could figure it out easily probably the bud idea is better yeah usually that's you know if you start thinking about developing something it's usually like oh yeah i could do that it's real easy it'd be fine that happens to me all the time yeah that'll be super simple and then you start that's why I, I focus on planning first because you'll start working out some of those kinks that you didn't think of before and then you start to realize how big of a project it actually is and usually you end up deciding like maybe it's just easier to troubleshoot the service instead of extending the service um, but if I mean it's fun to play around with stuff too I used to do stuff like that all the time in high school and middle school and um, it was a good way to learn stuff. You learn a lot doing that. However, if you know what you want to do, like learn that. <laughs> Don't just pick up random stuff and learn. Um, focus on what you want to do and try to achieve your goal instead of just random learning. It's a much quicker way to get to the, uh, uh, to accomplish your goals. Continue in backgrounds, discard all. It is 11 or I guess midnight 11 12 11 but luckily I had a nice little nap today feeling like I'm gonna be staying up kind of late tonight so we'll see how much of this we can get through oh no I closed the browser what was I thinking um, I'm gonna take a five minute break and in that five minutes I'm gonna download parrot and we'll see if we can, I guess, I don't know if it'll go that quick, but I'm going to play around and pair it a little bit. So I'll be back in five minutes. Um, feel free to hang out and chat. I'll just be downloading Parrot. <laughs> see you in five minutes.
Thank you.